I spent the evening of August 4th walking round the streets, especially in the neighbourhood of Trafalgar Square, noticing cheering crowds and making myself sensitive to the emotions of passers-by. During this and the following days, I discovered to my amazement that average men and women were delighted at the prospect of war. I had fondly imagined what most pacifists contended, that wars were forced upon a reluctant population by despotic and Machiavellian governments. I was tortured by patriotism. The successes of the Germans before the Battle of the Marne were horrible to me. I desired the defeat of Germany as ardently as any retired colonel. Love of England is very nearly the strongest emotion I possess, and in appearing to set it aside at such a moment, I was making a very difficult renunciation. Nevertheless, I never had a moment's doubt as to what I must do. I have at times been paralysed by scepticism. At times I have been cynical, at other times indifferent. But when the war came, I felt as if I heard the voice of God. I knew that it was my business to protest, however futile a protest might be. My whole nature was involved. As a lover of truth, the national propaganda of all the belligerent nations sickened me. As a lover of civilization, the return to barbarism appalled me. As a man of thwarted parental feeling, the massacre of the young wrung my heart. I hardly supposed that much good would come of opposing the war, but I felt that for the honor of human nature, those who were not swept off their feet should show that they stood firm.